Okay, so this is the um, amino acids chromatography. You can see we've got this special paper um, to use for it, which is divided into strips already. So we can have um, a different strip for each amino acid. And I've got five amino acids I'm going to put on there. You'll notice I'm handling this with gloves. And the reason for that is I might have proteins on the, the oils on my fingers. And I don't want to end up developing those later on as well. So I really want to keep it very clean and neat. So it's just the amino acids that I'm spotting onto the, onto the paper that are going to be detected. So as before, you use a little capillary tube. Put your finger over the end to stop it sucking up too much. Into the liquid and then spot carefully onto the paper. And I've drawn a pencil line on there as always, because we don't want ink being um, run up the paper when we put it into the solvent. Okay, so I'm gonna systematically do these in turn, and then you can watch the next film clip in order to see what to do at the next stage. So I've put all the amino acid spots onto the chromatography paper now, and I need to put it into the development chamber. So I've prepared the solvent in the bottom there already, and now I just need to get this ready to put in. Remember, the whole point of having this development chamber is that we try to make an atmosphere in there that's very rich with all the solvents because that helps to um, move the spots up the paper. So we're trying to look at the different retention times of the different spots. And the theory is that the more polar or the more um, the amino acid can hydrogen bond, the more it will adhere to the paper, the more um, non-polar it is or the more it uses van der Waals interactions, the more it should um, shift up the paper with the solvent. So I leave that in there for a little while and I'm very careful not to shift it around and um, rock it and shake it because I want the solvent to be shifting up the paper all nice and evenly all the way around. So I'll just keep observing that and I'll lift it out when the solvent gets almost to where the loop of the paper clip is now. So I think it's time now to take this out of the development chamber. So I'm going to very carefully remove it and I've got to mark on where the solvent comes to so I can see the solvent front. And that's quite tricky because it's quite difficult to see where it's soaked up to. So I'll be doing my best to do that. And while I'm doing that, I'd like you to have a look at the um, structures that I've drawn on here. Now these are the structures, these are the amino acids that I've dotted on the paper in the order that I've dotted them onto the paper. So you might like to have a think about which one you think will have moved furthest up the paper and which one you think will have stayed fairly close to the, um, to the baseline. So remember the rule for this is the more hydrogen bonds it can form and the more polar it is, the more it will adhere to the paper, the more it will stay in that stationary phase. The more non-polar it is, the more van der Waals it can form effectively, the more it will have moved up with the solvent. Okay, so have a look at those and see if you can make some predictions about which ones you think will have moved furthest up the paper and which ones you think will have stayed close to the baseline.